Hey, what about the problem of evil? Boom! That whole Tim Barnett thing got me kind of back into regular, old-fashioned religion apologetics, so let's do some more of that. Who then is responsible for evil? Is that what you're maybe digging for here? Yes. Okay, you are. I am. The world is. Okay, so who created the world? Who created humans? Right, okay, the question is, who is responsible for evil? Well, you've got this god, who was the only thing that existed prior to the universe, according to Christians. He creates the world exactly as he wants it to be. He creates human beings exactly how he wants them to be. And human beings and the world produce evil. And of course, this was no surprise. God doesn't just know what he's doing in the moment, he knows the future as well. He knew what was going to happen, so he created the world, he created humans, knowing perfectly well that, okay, the end result of this is going to be they create a bunch of evil in the Christian world view objective evil and he signed off on that and said yeah that's exactly what i want let's go ahead and create that and somehow despite this the argument is being made that god is not the one responsible for the consequences i don't see how that makes sense he intentionally creates an evil world and he's not responsible for what he intentionally did what are we one sentence in here and already it makes no sense if it's good god if it's bad man Oh, well, isn't that convenient? Imagine applying this to other scenarios. Like in 20 years, some company starts producing household robots. The robots have artificial intelligence, so they're making decisions about what to do. They might have certain proclivities, certain things that their design or their training might predispose them to do or want to do. But by and large, they're free to make their own decisions. And most of the time, everything goes well. But sometimes the robot uh, sets fire to a house, drowns the family dog, rips out somebody's throat. And, you know, the company knew this was going to happen. This was a known bug, but they just didn't feel like fixing it. They had the money, they had the time, they had the employees, they had the know-how, they just didn't feel like it. So out the door they ship these robots, and, you know, a bunch of people end up dead, lives ruined. These robots, while generally good, cause massive mayhem as well. Totally preventable, totally needless. I mean, they were already made with all sorts of other things they do and don't want to do. You could have just included that. Or hell, I mean, these robots, the only reason they were made was to flip pancakes. They're artificially intelligent pancake flippers. Did you really need to make it so they're physically even capable of ripping out somebody's throat? What was the point of that feature? Anyway, people start asking questions. They go to the company and they say, what the hell? I mean, I bought this robot. It was just supposed to flip my pancakes and it murdered my kid. What's the deal? Why did you make these robots like this? Why is it even physically possible? Why aren't there safeguards? Why is there like a flamethrower built into it and a Bowie knife and a dog drowning arm? This seems really poorly thought out. Are you sure you tested this for safety? And the company says, hey, huh, that's not our responsibility. If it's good, it's us. We get the credit, okay? But if it's bad, it's the robot's fault. That's how this works. It's just common sense. And I know what's going to come up here. I know it's going to get mentioned. Free will. I already partially addressed that, of course, with the fact that humans are already predisposed to want to do or not want to do certain things. We don't have perfectly free will. We're driven by our own natures, by the nature of our own brains, our own physiology, neurochemistry, psychology. Free will, frankly, in the sense that people talk about it when they talk about this issue, is already a complete joke. It doesn't match reality whatsoever. But of course the more important point, which I brought up in my Tim Barnett Rebranding Hell series, is that creating a world that doesn't have this problem would not involve any infringement of free will regardless. You don't have to change the person, you have to change the world. If you want to stop people suffering from disease, from natural disasters, you just make those not happen. And if you want to stop people from suffering at the hands of each other, you just make it physically impossible in the same way that flapping your arms and flying up to the moon is impossible. The will is a complete irrelevancy. Obviously changing that is one possible solution to this problem, but we're talking about God here. The guy with infinite power, infinite knowledge, infinite ways to solve any problem he wants to solve, before it even occurs. If it occurs at all, he already doesn't want to solve the problem because he made it occur. He knew it was going to occur. He made the world in which it occurs. He made the rules by which it occurs. And he could have simply made it not occur by any number of means. But nope. I'm getting quite a ways ahead of the conversation, though. I don't even actually know if free will comes up here. I'm just assuming. But I'm right. Now, why does God allow evil to happen? If God is good, why doesn't he stop everything? No, 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 no. It's not why wouldn't he stop it. It's why would he start it? This isn't some situation of some naive person doing something with unintended consequences. The excuses don't work. When you're God, you don't get to say, Oh, I made a boo-boo. I didn't realize that would happen. I'm so sorry. God made the world complete with the evil in it, with perfect foreknowledge and total intent. It's not that he made a world that he thought would be perfect and free from evil, and then he helplessly watched as it just went all wrong. How could he possibly have seen that coming? No, if someone did that, that's not God. Not as Christians describe them. That is a fallible, ignorant, powerful, sure, but certainly not all-powerful entity. 
No, if there's a world with even the tiniest shred of evil in it, which is an objective thing, it's objectively measurable, quantifiable, right? Objective morality, it's not a matter of opinion. If there's one drop of evil, God wanted it there. God put it there. God had every opportunity to make the world such that it was not there, but it's there. Okay, well this is, if anybody here is a parent, you're gonna have children, you know they're gonna sin and do bad. But don't compare it. Uh, fair enough. I will remove the analogy. Yeah, so I don't know why the guy at the mic here wanted the speaker to not use their parents as an analogy here. He didn't get a chance to say why, but I can think of one very good reason why, and I think he was right to object. And that reason is, parents are not gods. Parents do not create an entire universe within which their children will live. They don't craft their children from nothing exactly how they wish. They don't personally see to putting every single atom in its place within the brain. They don't craft craft the human body from scratch. They don't have infinite power to prevent any evils that might befall their children or any evils their children might inflict on others. And they can't see the fucking future. Maybe they can make educated guesses, but they don't know the future with perfect clarity. God and a parent are in no way analogous in this sense. Not even a little bit. Sure, there are certain times when you could analogously compare God and a parent, but this is not one of them. The analogy doesn't map. The relevant aspects of these two things do not overlap. Infinite power versus hardly any power. Infinite knowledge versus hardly any knowledge. Creation in the exact way intended down to the smallest particle versus popping out a baby and trying to teach it kinda. They are just not comparable. Not for this argument. Not with these characteristics that you're concerned with. To try to compare them is absolute foolishness, and yet, all the time it happens, people try to make these kind of comparisons. The reason that this world exists is really simple. All right, sometimes people hear the story of Adam and Eve and they think, uh-oh, they ate the fruit, plan B, God huddled the angels together. What do we do now? Uh-uh. It was God's foreordained, prearranged plan. Well, you don't get that admission very often. So God wasn't surprised. God wasn't disappointed. He didn't have to go to plan B and start trying to defeat the evil. No, he knew. Right from the start. Just like I said, at least you're honest. It does completely nuke your entire worldview, but at least you're honest that he would create a universe with people in it, Adam and Eve. Adam was your federal representative. Whether you liked it or not, Adam represented you. I didn't vote for him. Fucker can represent himself. He sinned. God knew he would sin. Right, exactly. You've understood the story. Holy crap. Finally. Okay. God knew. He thought about making a universe. He went, ah, how should I make this universe? Um, let's see. I could make it so evil things don't happen, sin doesn't happen. I could make it so it does. Yeah, let's go with does. I like that one. That sounds more interesting. It'll be a boring movie otherwise, you know? Why even bother making the popcorn if there's no conflict? At that point, I'm better off going outside. And there's no universe, so there is no outside. Yeah, better go with evil. Let me just create a little Satan here, and, uh, okay, hi, buddy. You're gonna be the antagonist. How's that sound? That sounds fun, Daddy. Thank you. He sinned. God knew he would sin. Throwing the world into sin, and we see the effects everywhere with everything. Why did he do this? Because God wanted to demonstrate his attributes of mercy, grace, and loving kindness. Oh, see, you know, I didn't realize that part. See, I thought it was just for God's own entertainment that he did all this. You know, I mean, obviously it seems completely pointless. The only real explanation is he was bored, or he just does random things for no reason. Or so I thought, but no, you're right, there is another option. He wanted to stroke his own ego. Of course, create a world full of sin and evil and suffering to show how merciful, graceful, and lovingly kind you are. It all makes sense. Apparently. God is Trinitarian. Three persons, one God. Which kind of explains the decision making. Right. God has lots of attributes. Power. Truth. All right. And he can show off those attributes to himself between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That is unbelievably cringe. I have all these cool attributes, but who am I going to show them to? I can only show them to myself. I wish I could show them to someone else so they think I'm tough and cool. Because cause I am cool. Why are we taking it for granted that God has to show off? What is this insecure nonsense, you big weirdo? Shut up, it just feels good. But he has attributes like mercy and grace and loving kindness. And God doesn't need mercy or grace because he's not a sinner. Ah. Ah. So for him to show his mercy, grace, and loving kindness, he created a planet knowing that we would sin, not causing us to sin, knowing that we would sin in his prearranged plan so that he could send his son, Jesus Christ, to be born of a virgin, to live under the law, to redeem those of us under the curse of the law, so that for the ages to come, God could point to sinners like you and me and say, if you want to know how merciful I am, I saved that guy. 
I have a serious question for you at this point, and I honestly mean this because now I'm not sure. Is this a joke? Like, is your whole channel a joke? Let's see what we got here. We got a YouTube channel with 440 something thousand subscribers. We got a Facebook page with 237,000 followers. We got a website with a shop with links to your radio presence and TV presence. It seems serious. And yet you're standing there basically making an atheist argument from 2010, right? Why did God do all this? Why did he bother to make the world if he knew it was going to be full of sin? Why didn't he just make it differently? What was the point of all this Jesus stuff, like making a human version of of himself and then sacrificing himself to himself. The whole thing seems completely pointless unless the whole point was just to impress himself or to impress humans with how awesome he is. The whole entire enterprise seems like a giant ego trip and here you are just openly saying yeah it's just a giant pointless ego trip. The entire world was made for no other reason than for God to impress himself with how merciful and graceful and loving and kind he is so that he could show it to somebody and those somebodies would go wow and then presumably get on their knees and worship them. And that's not just a point, that's the point. He intentionally created an evil world, a world full of suffering, and all that suffering serves only one purpose, which is for God to feel better about himself. Personally, I've always found the Christian story unimpressive and pathetic on a whole number of levels, but this is a whole other thing. I never thought I would hear someone say something like this. They might imply it, but how often does someone just come out and say it in the same way I would come out and say it? This is gold. I found gold. This is the best video I've found all year. If you want to know how gracious I am, I saved that woman. If you want to know how kind I am, I saved that group of people which is called the church. You were created to glorify God. You, what can I even say? I mean, you have the world's least inspiring religion. The entire world exists because God's an insecure little bitch and he needs you to think that he's good at something. And this, just to be clear, isn't a joke. You're not a closeted atheist making fun of the Christians. Are you? I'm serious. Are you? Like, okay, the, your channel name is Wretched, which, who knows. But you got the whole studio, 112 million views, coming up on 3,000 videos. If this is a Poe, this is the most dedicated Poe ever. I don't think it's a Poe, but I don't know what to think. I would say it's just some version of Christianity that makes even less sense than the rest, but it doesn't. It actually makes more sense than them, at least so far. That's why it sounds like a joke version of the religion that came out of one of my videos, because my joke versions are the ones that are actually internally coherent. Most likely that there stems from the old enthymeme routine. You know that logical fallacy. Yeah, whatever. Is your studio a cafeteria? Why do you have that roll-down shutter window thing with the stools in front of it? Hey, if God is all-powerful and God is all-loving and if evil exists and we observe that it does, therefore... What on earth is behind you? That's one of those pipe bookshelf things, I guess, is maybe intended to be a bookshelf. It would look just fine, but there's no shelves. The books are just sitting directly on the pipes. That cannot be good for those books. You should take those down. It hurts me to look at. The two aforementioned premises, they can't both be right. Okay, hold on. What premises did you say? Okay, if God is all-powerful, and God is all-loving, and evil exists, that's a contradiction, and so God has to be either not all-powerful or not not all loving. That's how you're putting this forward. Okay. What if God's just, uh, ignorant? Just doesn't know evil exists? What if he's just really fucking stupid? And you know, he doesn't even know that he has the power to deal with it? Or he doesn't even notice it because he can't process that information? Yeah, the point is you didn't even get the attributes right. It's omnipotence, so all-powerfulness. Omnibenevolence, so all-goodness. And then omniscience, so all-knowingness. When you have those and then you have evil existing, that's where you start to have a problem. I just wanted to point that out because no matter how smug you are, that's not a substitute for actually knowing the argument you're talking about. That is fallacious. All three can coexist if there is a morally justifiable reason for the latter. Well, all three could coexist anyway with no problem because you got the argument totally wrong. But that aside, basically you're putting limits on God's power. You're saying he is omnipotent, but then saying he's not. Right? If there's a morally justified reason for evil to exist, meaning if there's something God wants to accomplish and he creates evil so that that thing can be accomplished, if he's all-powerful, he could also accomplish that thing without creating evil. Right? Whatever the greater good is that requires evil, if God's all-powerful, it does not. Because God's all-powerful. He can just make it not require that. He can just say a word and it's already accomplished. No evil required. So there's absolutely no need for evil to exist. There's no reason or justification for it. The only reason for it to exist would be because God felt like making it exist, because he liked it. 
However, there are several other ways to respond to the old accusation that God must not exist because evil does. Hold up, that's not the conclusion and you know it. The conclusion is not about whether or not God exists. This argument is not about that. This argument is about if God exists, and with the assumption that objective good and evil exist, which is kind of included in the assertion that God is all good, then based on the way the world is, because there's evil in the world, according to the Christian, God cannot have of those three properties, omnipotence, omniscience, and omnibenevolence. Those three together are in contradiction with evil. Now you could solve this a number of ways. You could say there is no objective good and evil. You could say God is not all powerful. You could say God is not all good. You could say God is not all knowing. Or you could just say God is not and be done with it. If, say, a Christian buys into it, it could just lead to a modification of their idea of God, or their idea of morality. And people who already believe in gods without these three properties, or who don't believe in objective morality, have absolutely no problem here. They can just go about their day. This is not an argument for creating atheists. Starting with the only way that we know that there is evil is because God does exist. In other words, the issue of evil doesn't undermine the existence of God, it actually proves it! Yell louder, you might convince me even harder. If God didn't exist, clubbing children with a bat would merely be a preference. You couldn't say it is morally reprehensible because there is no objective moral standard. Everything would be vanilla ice cream. Your preference is your preference. I already did a big discussion about my ideas on morality in the Tim Barnett videos. I'm definitely not going to do it again here. If you want to see that, go watch those. I will say this guy has a remarkably small-minded idea of how human morality works. But I've already addressed that recently, and more importantly, it is utterly irrelevant here. Why? Because we're not talking about atheistic morality. We're not talking about morality in a godless universe. We're talking about morality in the Christian worldview. We're talking about objective morality. What is or is not true in an atheistic world has absolutely no bearing on a discussion of inconsistencies within the Christian worldview. Hey wretched guy, whatever the hell your name is, it doesn't matter what you believe the moral consequences would be if there was no God. You believe there is, and we're talking about you. The problem of evil is not an argument about fucking atheists. It's an argument about your ideas, not ours. So why are you starting in with this garbage? Well, if your ideas were true, blah blah blah, well, so what? That doesn't answer the problem of evil. A syllogistic argument is not resolved by just pointing at someone else and saying, well, what about that guy? I don't like him. You're just avoiding the subject running away, changing topics. Holy fuck, you're almost as pathetic as your god. That guy, his preference is to rape women. Who could I be to judge that person? After all, there's no higher authority. That's just his preference. I'm not gonna have a shortage of thumbnail candidates here, am I? In other words, Evil points to the existence of God, not to the absence of it. Okay, aside from the fact that I don't think objective morality's existence would establish God's existence, because I can make up all sorts of scenarios where objective morality and even heaven and hell exist and God doesn't. The problem of evil does not prove God doesn't exist. That's not what it's for. That's not what it's about. Never has been. So if I granted you, for the sake of argument, that objective morality is real, objective good and evil, and that this establishes God's existence, for some reason, you've still got the problem of evil when you try to call God all-powerful, all-good, and all-knowing. And hey, maybe there's a response to the argument, but you would have to actually argue that point, which you haven't done. You've just dodged this way, dodged that way, pointed fingers at people who have nothing to do with any of this. You've done everything you can think of except actually answer the problem of evil. So as I say, maybe there is a good response to it, but I'm starting to think probably you don't have it. But I would like to suggest to you there is a third way to dismiss and dismantle the argument that gets used as a cudgel against Christians. We rewind the tape chronologically and philosophically. Oh my god, I just realized you sound exactly like Karl Baugh. And then you got the suit and the hair. You're like a slightly younger, skinnier Karl. One of you is a bigger prick than the other one, though. I'm just not sure which one. Take people back to the garden to discuss an issue, a philosophical... Wait a second, can you stop moving the camera? Or tell your camera guy not to? Or can you just stop wandering around your studio and just... You have a desk back there, right? Just sit there. Or stand in front of your weird pipe bookcase. 
or something. On second thought though, since there's no shelves, one of those books is liable to fall on your head. Best not tempt fate. Sit at the cafeteria. My wife said you're making her dizzy. Now, she gets dizzy from kinda everything. Video games, movies. But I don't, and you're kinda starting to make me dizzy too. Can you stop it? Take people back to the garden to discuss an issue, a philosophical issue that is precious to them. Whatever philosophical issue you have to take me to the Garden of Eden to talk about is probably not precious to me. Here is how the Bible describes the way that God made the planet. In his omnipotence, he spoke everything into existence, six 24-hour days, and he put two human beings on the planet that had genuine free will. Okay, not relevant to the problem of evil. I've explained that in the Tim Barnett videos. I've explained that in this video. I've explained that in many older videos. At least I assume I have. This is the kind of thing that comes up all the time. So yeah, meaningless. You're just saying words for no reason. All right, now what I'm addressing here is only a seven minute video, but somehow I still have another whole video's worth of stuff to say here, so I'm gonna have to call this part one and end it here. Honestly, I didn't watch this that closely when I picked it. I thought I'd have to stretch it to make 20 minutes, but nope, I made 40. And honestly, that was me trying to keep it a little bit more concise. Like I said, I found gold here. So thanks for watching. Please, before you go, give the video a like and click subscribe. Huge thanks to every single one of my supporters. If you want early access to videos, sign up to my email list at list.logic.com. I also have an Odyssey channel now. That's an alternative platform to YouTube. It's actually very nice. It's much better than something like BitChute. It's fast, it's slick looking, and I've actually found a surprising variety of creators already over there. All different types of content, all different political persuasions. Not everybody's creating content just for Odyssey, but a lot of people are at least mirroring their channels over there. So I find it pretty promising. That's as near as I've got right now to a full backup channel, so I'll put an invite link in the description, and if you want to follow me over there, go for it. Anyway, see you next time.